So we have a, a question here about using A equals QR, QR decomposition to solve AX equals B, and why we couldn't do it in a more straightforward fashion than going through the normal equation. So let, let's just recap the normal equations first. Uh, so the issue in general, and this is, this is really the problem, is that B might not be in the column space of A. And if that's true, we have to use the normal equations. We've derived these, these magnificent things. Let's put a box around it because awesome. So we know that this always has a solution, and we know it's not x, we're going to call it x star, right? And if b is in the column space of a, then it will collapse back and, and we'll actually get a solution to our original problem. All right, but generally, we have to do this sort of thing. So it's an approximation. All right, so let's just step through it again. We're going to put qr in here. q and a are the same kind of thing, right? So q's column space and a's column space match up. R is a combining matrix that tells you how to build the columns of Q, uh, the columns of A from the columns of Q. Good. So we'll stick it in and we understand these magical things about transposes. So QR transpose QR, it's replacing A. A transpose goes to QR transpose. Um, we go R to R transpose. Q goes to Q transpose. And we swap the order. Uh, everything else is staying the same except here as well. We're going to put R transpose here and Q transpose here. Right, now we see Q transpose Q lining up against each other and this, these, uh, this is this magnificent feature of Q, has nice orthonormal columns. Um, there are humans talking behind me. So that the, the product of this is the identity. See that different webisode. So R transpose R, uh, and we end up with just R transpose R. That's this piece, the identity. All right, and then on the right, it's our transpose Q. All right, good. So we know that the inverse of our transpose exists in general because um, uh, this is an upper triangular uh, matrix, and we're assuming that the the um, A's columns are linearly independent. So there's some pieces in there. So if that exists, then we can just multiply by the inverse on both sides. We end up with just our X star. Q transpose B. Let's look at what's in there. R is an n by n upper triangular matrix. X star we're looking for. It's a vector n by 1. So these things match up. Q transpose. It's like A. It's been swapped around. So it's n by m. B is n by 1. As it always has been. So we've got n by 1 over here. So all good. It's an upper triangular system. And um, we, have, we can compare it with uh, A equals LU. So A equals LU, we solved that. We had an upper triangular system. We solved that, and then we solved a lower triangular system. All right. But this is even better, because we just have one uh, upper triangular thing to solve. This is easy. So once we have QR, we can always just, someone gives you a B. All you have to do is multiply Q transpose times B, and then solve an upper triangular system through back substitution. Okay? All right. Now, we could have... We could have done this, hmm. but let's start with just AX equals B, and then we'll stick in QR. Right, so QR for A, there it is, equals uh, B. Right, and then we could just multiply both sides because we know that the um, Q transpose acts as a left inverse. It's not necessarily a right inverse, only when Q is a square matrix. So we're going to do this to the left-hand side here. And we do the same to the right-hand side because that's the way these equation things work. Here's the identity. That was the idea. We're peeling it off. All right, so it's an identity matrix times R times X equals Q transpose B. So we've got our same equation, right? I times R. It's just R X equals Q transpose B. Now there's actually there is a there is a difference here. This is not x star. So what's going on? So actually, as we've multiplied by q transpose, and you want to look at it on the right hand side. So let's look at that. We have q1 transpose q2 transpose down 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 qn transpose, and these are actually unit vectors. Let's fix that up. With this magic raising technique we have. 
All right. Okay. These guys are sitting here, and they're multiplying b. It's vector b. Well, what's actually happening is um, they these are cutting out only the pieces of b that live in the column space of a. Right. So these guys span the column space of A and if you remember um, the projection matrix say onto, onto one of these vectors let's call it Q sub I is Q sub I and then the um, transpose so this is a projection matrix so this guy times any vector projects it onto that direction so this is part of it we're taking the piece of B that lives in the column space of A. Um, so we're already, so we're kind of working on the normal equation. And, and really what's going to happen here is any B that's in, any part of B that's in uh, the left null space gets crunched. So if we have, um, so the problem is this, Let's write it like this, Q transpose um, B, let's write it as our friends, the projected piece plus E, right? So this is in the column space of A, this is in the, column, uh, the left null space, and we're kind of fooling ourselves. Right, so every, um, every vector here is in it's in the column space of A, right? So this is column space of A stuff. This is left null space stuff. So this is all zero. This ends up as a zero vector, right? Every vector here is at right angles to, every, to, to the left null space vector. So we are already pruning something off. And so we, we kind of miss that. We miss that. So we are really solving. We're really solving the normal equation. So that's a, 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 a nice, subtle question to, to have asked, and it's a good thing to understand. All right.